And today's lesson is eating for your function and why one diet is not really right for everyone. And basically also how to find out what's right for you. I mean, there's so much information and misinformation about diets. I mean, think about it. We talked about this earlier about the various diets out there. And if you recall, diets, as I said, don't work. There is nutrition programs. And I would encourage you to look at things from a nutritional program. Now, your nutritional program, when you're building that out, by this time you've you know, been doing the optimizers, you're doing your tracking results, you're getting some biofeedback. What we're looking at here is how to really go into optimization. Okay, we talk about this biological optimization, bio-optimization. Now, there's, a quite, there's one popular thing out there that's called hacking. And, you know, biohacking, which is an interesting topic, you know, don't get me started on it, but biohacking is the idea is little tricks and tips to kind of hack your body to produce that result. Well, hacking does work, and there, there's definitely ports, but I look at optimization because hacking is kind of like a shortcut. Hacking in computers often does a lot of damage to, you know, people's property and stuff, and I believe hacking your body in a way that it's not designed to might have some short-term benefits, but over the long term, it can run into some real problems. And believe me, I was a master biohacker when I was competing in bodybuilding, and that's what set me up for that big failure after the, my first Mr. Universe. You know, I crashed and burned and had to learn how to optimize and get something that's sustainable. You want a sustainable program. A diet, per se, this whole mentality, it's not sustainable. You cannot stay on calorie restriction forever. What happens is your body will, sh will, will, will just fall down, shut down, and you're going against your genetics. So you got to understand is that's why we introduce spiking in you know, one of our earlier lessons. You talked about that, how to spike. But how do you select the program that's right for you, right? Where do we get that right for you? How do we do that? Well, it all comes down to, remember our bucket in the bucket theory, okay? What is your lifestyle? So are you a senior citizen? Are you a teenager? What, is your, what are the components of your lifestyle? Okay, number one, what is your job requirements? Okay, most of us are going to spend more time at work than anywhere else. And think about it. Most people are working eight hours a day, and you think maybe there's a, an, an average half-hour commute. That's nine hours just in your job per day. That's like 45 hours a week minimum, okay? So whatever your diet that enhances your function at work, so if you're a guy, you know, when I was starting out when, you know, years and years ago, I was doing manual labor for eight hours a day, and then I was training for two hours in the morning, training for two hours in the evening, and then for another four days a week, I was doing bartending at night. In order for me to maintain my physicality, I needed to eat about seven meals per day. Now, obviously, if you're a senior citizen, you know, and you don't have to go to work, you don't have a lot of exercise or activity in your life, you can probably get by on three meals. Most people will be five meals. And we talked about that earlier. We want the three basics. You know, the, you know your shake, your salad, and a meal in the evening, and then you, you fit your snacks in between. But this here, lifestyle. So what is your exercise? So if you're doing your exercise, what type? So what type of exercise is this? You know, so your exercise requisites. For example, a good friend of mine, uh, John, he, uh, he's a big student of Stu Middleman, the super endurance runner. And Stu's whole philosophy is very slow burning. They start people running very slow. And he's against all, you know, virtually all carbohydrates. So John, you know, lost 70 pounds in total following this process. He just eliminated all the sugars. He started out just picking one thing at a time. First, he started with sodas. Then he started switching his diet. Then he started cutting out, you know, things that didn't suit him. Then he increased his water intake. And then he started running. And over the course of three years, he lost 70 pounds and ran his first marathon. Now, he stays completely away from carbohydrates, and he has a high-protein, high-fat diet, and he calls it a slow burn. That's very popular um, along with the bulletproof stuff as well. They eat some carbs every two or three days. For me, 
I lift weights. So I'm into bodybuilding. Now, of course, I'm not at the same level as when I was competitive where, you know, I was putting in hours and hours a day. I stay mostly to maintain and I do a lot of metabolic training because I travel a lot and I, I've changed my lifestyle. So my diet, obviously I don't need this many meals anymore. Five is usually good for me. Or are you into some other sport or do you require something that re requires high levels of focus and concentration? A lot of our um, students are medical doctors or surgeons and oftentimes surgeons have to go for long periods of time without eating much and, and if they do get out they need to have kind of you know high calorie dense foods that will sustain them you know they can get out for two minutes of the surgery and, and you know they have a handful of nuts or something and eat that and then they're back in you know those are type of considerations that you want to consider when it comes down to your lifestyle so selecting that the other thing is, is what is your individual genetics? So the fact of the matter is, is that certain people respond better to certain diets. And this was proven by uh, Chris Aceto. I mentioned him years ago. He did a whole um, study on the different ethnic backgrounds and the foods that their body metabolized better. So for example, many people in the Asian culture uh, metabolize rice better. I came from you know, kind of like the, the Irish, Germanic, you know, European. And we had exposure to a lot of potatoes. So for me, I do really well. I can, I can eat potatoes all day long. And of course, you want to cook them. And even though I have mostly raw food diet, potatoes need to be cooked because they have an enzyme in it that you need to cook them in order to block that enzyme blocker. So I do really well in this. I know people that if they have a potato, they pass out in a few minutes. Other people can have rice. Okay, so, you know, this is not to be about, you know, ethnics, it's just about, it's just about the genetics that you, you come into this world with. Once you optimize your body, you can start to change your own metabolism. So, you know, there's that book, Biology Belief by Bruce Lipton that starts to show that your genetics can change. And what will influence that? Enzymes. Enzymes are the great equalizer. They will allow your body to metabolize things that they couldn't because, again, if you're missing amylase, you're going to have a hard time with carbs. If you're missing lipase, you're going to have a hard time with fats. If you're missing protease, you're going to have a hard time with proteins. But if you're taking you know, our masszymes, you know, our super enzyme formulation, guess what? You're going to be, we have all of these inside of here. So your range is going to increase significantly over time, especially if you go through the whole 84 days, 84 steps, you go through the whole biological, biological optimization process. So these sort of things, the other things is your lifestyle. In other words, are you training a lot? Are you exercising a lot? Are you in a high stress environment? Do you travel a lot? So if you're a traveler, okay, if you're a traveler, you're probably going to have to really focus extra on hydration and snacks. I got it cracked on that one. Snacks that allows you to travel, right? This is a big one. You're also going to have to really work on your sleep optimization. You know, I got a couple of friends that travel all the time and, you know, they didn't get their they didn't get their sleep optimization and sometimes they they have a real challenge you know sleeping at night and i always encourage them to define the sleep optimization program if you're one of these people that travels a lot hydration and snacks you're going to want to find these type of things into your diet if you're someone who's you know an endurance athlete you're probably going to need more fats um some people you know from a concentration perspective there's there's two different camps there's those that do really well on fats for brain function, and there's those that do very well on carbs. I tend to be one of the persons in the carb zone. Matt, my, one of my business partners at Bioptimizers, Matt and Dave, Matt does really well on fats, and Dave, interesting enough, does really well on proteins. He doesn't feel right unless he has you know, meat proteins a few times a week. Matt makes sure that he has all kinds of fats, and I have to have all kinds of carbs, You know, simple carbohydrates like fruits and vegetables, which Matt doesn't do very well on. It's interesting, and we all the same. We're partners in bioptimizers, but we all have these different components 
we all do a little bit different as far as our exercise components and our lifestyles, how much we travel, and we've all kind of tweaked our own formula. So you got to realize that this is part of a process, and how you do that is through tracking your biofeedback. In other words, you want to track how food makes you feel. Are you tired after a meal? Were you hungry throughout the day? Did you have crashes in energy? Were you able to maintain your mental focus? These are called biofeedback triggers. And by recording that and tracking it with your diet, you're going to get a really good idea of what works for you and what doesn't work for you in different situations. So for example, when I travel, I almost, I eat virtually nothing. I'll drink a bunch of water beforehand, have maybe a good breakfast, and I'll travel 8, 12, 14 hours, and I won't eat anything. I won't eat any of the food on the plane, any of that sort of stuff. When I land, I'll drink a whole bunch of water again before I eat. I'm, I'm really concentrating on, on hydration. That, to me, is way more important because I'll stay with the bio-optimizer stuff, put lots of vitamins and minerals inside the body, and that's great. So, again, you want to go through what's right for you, and the only way to really get this down is through biofeedback. You can also do, um, and we'll talk about this later, some of the genetic testing to see what your methylation cycle is, see what foods agree with you and what don't, what doesn't. But usually you can figure this out just from tracking your results. And be prudent and watch it every day and keep track. Time that you eat, how you felt, what was your moods, um, were you tired, happy, bloated, sad, crashed, angry, all that sort of thing. That is very key indicator. And remember, you know, you're at, you're at lesson number 50 now, and congratulations on that. You've come a long way, and we've learned a lot of stuff. Review the information, but this isn't about, you know, us dictating how your life is. Are you following one particular diet? Or we're not here to be diet gurus or, or peg you into something. We're here to give you the tools, the tricks, the optimizers, the way, the feedback systems, and the, and the tests that allow you to become an expert in your own physiology, in your own physical body, because that's the person that knows your body better than anyone else. So I hope you enjoyed this. I know you're probably going to have some questions. Be sure to post them at the Bioptimizer site, and we'll get on them, and we'll answer them for you. I'm glad you've been on so for so long here. We've got a bunch more lessons, so stick with us. Keep, doing, keep going through the program, and we'll see you on the next lesson.